Okay, recall the product rule says that the derivative of the product of functions is not the product of the derivatives. Right? Although it's been tried by many students through the ages, it's not f prime times g prime, right? It's this here, the, the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. That's the product rule. So if we were to kind of walk this back and kind of take the antiderivative of both sides, it would look like this. So I'm taking the antiderivative of the left, which will just take us back to f times g, and then the antiderivative of the right will be the integral of f g prime plus the integral of g f prime. Nothing hard so far, right? So product rule, and then this would be walking the product rule back to recover fg. So fg could be expressed as the antiderivative of fg prime plus the antiderivative of g f prime. And that would be our original product, f times g. Okay, so what we're going to get is we're going to get problems. There's, they're just going to be one integral though, okay? So we're just going to get, say, this given integral will be f will be in disguise, it'll be fg prime. And so the, we want the antiderivative of that. But when we look at that, <coughs> Our basic rules or undoing the chain rule, which is our, our first and that's the one we check first, right? Undoing the chain rule doesn't apply. <coughs> okay, always check for undoing the chain rule first. All th that's like the most common type of antiderivative. So all semester long as we, we do different topics and subjects and applications, always check for undoing the chain rule first. That's why you spend a whole class on it, okay? Um, but... Here, there's these cases where it doesn't apply and basic rules don't apply. All right, so we think maybe this is one of the integrals that is from the product rule. And then we look at, so if we had fg prime, we could consider what gf prime was, integral of gf prime. And if that's an easy antiderivative, like uh, basic rules or undoing the chain rule, then we can use, then we can use the... Uh, this technique of undoing the product rule. Because then all we would need, back, so then all we would need is, we would just figure out what f and g are, and multiply them over here, and then find out what the antiderivative of g f prime is, and solve that, and then we indirectly just then solve for this thing that I've highlighted red. See that? So we would just take f g minus this easier one, and that will be equal to the one that we were given. Does it make sense? Okay, so what's the strategy here? We're going to think of f g prime as one of the terms of the product rule, and we're going to determine f and g. Figure out what f is, and then figure out what g is. And that figure out what g is is going to be a matter of doing what? We've got f g prime, and we want to figure out what g is. What will that be a matter of doing to find g from g prime? Antiderivative, right? Antiderivative. It's, it's the derivative of g. So we're going to... We're going to keep f as it is, and then take the antiderivative of g. And then we're going to, so, so we've got f and g, we're going to solve for f and g. And then we're going to take the derivative of f, multiply it by g, and find that antiderivative, because if we're using this technique correctly, that one is easier. And then we'll solve for that one by doing what? What will we do? We'll have f times g, f times g, and we'll have the answer to this. And what will we do to get the answer to ours. Very simply, what? We've got this, and we want that. We've got these two things, and we want to solve for this. We'll subtract, right? So it's going to be this is going to be fg minus that, right? We're just going to subtract what we get there, and that'll be equal. So that. So we don't actually do it directly. We do it indirectly by solving a different integral. The other term in the product rule, right? So we do the other integral in the term of the product rule in order to find the one we want. Questions on the approach? So yeah, we'll do lots of examples. <coughs> okay, so there's that same thing again. So example. 
4x cosine x. Okay, so I like to ask this question. Can we, could you undo the chain rule to solve that? Could you do undoing the chain rule? Okay, so here's the question. What very small adjustment to that integral would you make in order so that undoing the chain rule would apply? What could, how would you adjust that integral so that, or make a small change to it so that you could use undoing the chain rule? Some people are saying it. So look, we've got, if we thought of this as f prime, then what would f need to be? This would be g prime of f. f would need to be squared, right? So if this were squared, then we could undo the chain rule. Do you see that? If it were x squared, you should. You should be able to see that that would be undoing the chain rule. But without that being x squared, it's something else, right? That, that undoing the chain rule won't work for this. Okay, so because we have a product then uh, of two things there, we think maybe it's undoing the product rule. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what is g. So uh, <clears throat> this is this is f g prime. So what is what is f, and what is g prime? How do you know? Well. You know by looking ahead, you know by experience, or you give it a shot and work on it, and if it doesn't work, you switch them. So how, how do you know which one's f and g prime? Well, with experience, you may be able to guess correctly with some forethought, but maybe in the beginning, you just, you just pick one of each, and then you just, just assign them, and then you give it a shot and see what happens. Okay, so here, here's some forethought. We're going to do f prime of g. So with doing the derivative of which of these would make it simpler, right? So if we're going to take the derivative of one of these, we're going to take the derivative of whatever we call f. Which one of these should be f so that when we take the derivative, it makes it simpler? 4x. That's the kind of, kind of reasoning that might solve, save you from guess and check. Okay, so what do we need? We need f and g and f prime, and we're all set, right? So uh, f prime is, easy, 4. Okay, now what is g? So we had to do a little antiderivative in our here, head here. So g of x is? It's negative or just positive, just positive sign. So now we got everything we need, right? So if we look at this again, we're solving for this. We'll call this A for the answer, right? A for the answer. So f is 4x, g prime is cosine x, so that's the integral that we have, 4x cosine x. So what do we need to do? We need to set up what's f times g? What's f times g? So we're going to do this. f times g is 4x times sine x. This is the answer. That's what we want. So just call it a plus integral g f prime, which will be, where's, what's g? Sine x. What's f prime? Now, if we did everything right, this new integral over here should be one we can do easily. How do we do? Can we do that antiderivative pretty easily? Yes. Yes, we can. All right. And it is. So let's just do that over here. So, uh, no, let's do it. So 4x sine x is ours plus antiderivative of 4 sine x. Negative 4 cosine x. Not 4x, right? Four, just constants just come around for the come along for the ride, right? <laughs> constants just come along for the ride. Antiderivative sine x, negative cosine. Last step, a equals Oh, sorry, no dx. We took the antiderivative. Okay, just negative four cosine x. 
So a equals 4x sine x plus 4 cosine x. We got an indefinite integral, so we can just, at the very end, we'll just tack on the constant. And we got it. If we're shaky, what can we do? How do we check it? If we take the derivative of this, we ought to get exactly this. All right. Derivative of 4x sine x, so check. We're going to do the derivative of a dx, okay? Derivative of our answer, dx. And it should be exactly what we started with. Derivative of 4x sine x, what do we have to do? 4 cosine x, right? No, product rule, right? Don't do that. This is the product rule. 4, so it's going to be first times derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times the second. What happened? What went wrong? Oh, derivative here. Okay. Plus derivative of 4 cosine x is negative 4 sine x equals, which is that's 0. Lo and behold. Did you see what happened? Did you catch it? Yeah. Would that be the same format if you were like to use by parts instead? This is an alternative to parts. Yeah, this is the, essentially what's called parts. Would, it, would doing by parts be in a different, would it be laid out in some way? No, uh, it's just a different perspective on it. Okay. But the math is all the same. Okay. But I'm just really trying to keep your focus on that, that this, is the, this is really the product rule. That this is really one, you're, you're really working on one term of the product rule, and we'd rather do the other integral, find fg, and then solve it directly. So I'm just, I'm just trying to shift the focus from memorizing steps to like what's really happening. <clears throat> Questions on that? All right, let's try some harder. Any questions? All right, so x squared e to the 3x. OK, so how about this? So I want you, everyone, think, through, think to yourself, what would be a one small change you could make to this so that you, the undoing the chain rule would work? What's one small, everyone think to yourself, don't say it. What's one small change you could make to this so that undoing the chain rule would work? Actually, there's, there's kind of two. Well, one's kind of a bigger change, but there's one really small change you could make so that undoing the chain rule would work. How about someone back here in the corner? Anyone th think they know it? What would you do? In the red shirt, in the very back? No, in the white shirt in the corner? Uh, did you make it x x equal Which x? Um, the, the exponent. In the exponent of e? Yeah. So 3x cubed? Is that what you're saying? He wants the exponent to be 3x cubed. What do you think? Does it work? Does that allow us to undo the chain rule if it was x squared e to the 3x cubed? Okay, well, so it's about undoing the chain rule. Remember how undoing the chain rule works? With undoing the chain rule, you've got the form f prime times g prime f, right? So one of your factors has to be the derivative of the inside of the other factor. And that allows for undoing the chain rule. It allows this thing to collapse back together and get us the original function. So does this do it? Yes, yes it does. Yes, it does. Because now our, essentially this now, x squared, is the derivative of 3x cubed with a factor to take care of, but it's fine. You just need the powers to be right. Okay, so if you're following what's going on, that you should be able to answer that question. I'll keep a asking it too. Why? Because undoing the chain rule is, like I said, emphasize, 
It's like the most important thing because it shows up the most and it's the one you're always going to check for first. Okay, but this won't work because it's, it's x squared e to the 3x, not 3x cubed. So we think maybe it's undoing the product rule. And if so, then we got to determine which of these is our f and which is our g prime. So following what we did last time, which one of those two would get simpler if we took the derivative of it? That's what we want it for f. Question? That would be, or, let's say the what was that? What do you think? I think it's x squared. Yeah. And what if what if we start doing it and it's wrong? What if we pick the wrong one? No bones are broken. No blood was spilled. You just start. You just try again, right? So so don't. What's that? Yeah. Right. So if you're, yeah, if you're under the gun, that's true. Okay, so, but in, in the general sense, that you can just try. You can just try, and if it doesn't work out, then try the other way. And we'll see, the next one we'll see is kind of like that. Okay, so here we go. So what we need then is we need f prime to set up the new integral, and we need g to set up f times g. So what's f prime? 2x. What's g? g. All right, so now we've got to do this little... Antiderivative in our head. Can we do it? One third e to the three x. Should all be able to do that. Okay, so now we are ready to set the whole thing up and see if it helped us out. <coughs> so f <coughs> f times g is x squared times one third e to the three x. And we're going to just call that again, just call it A for answer. That's what we're solving for. Plus integral G F prime. So we'll put the F prime first. 2x, 1 third e to the 3x, dx. And our, what did we say? Our goal was that, that this was something we could do. It's something easier, whereas the first one wasn't something we could do directly, but we could do this one easier. What do you think? No, because we got 2x, 1 third e to the 3x. If we were undoing the chain rule, we would need 3x what? Squared. So we can't undo the chain rule. So we have 2x, 1 third e to the 3x. So it is, it is, in a way, it's simpler than this, but not simple enough. Right? How are we going to do, tackle this? We're going to do this technique again. Do you see that if we do this technique again, what will the power of x become? No, zero. So it'll go away, right? The next time the x will go away, and then we can just do the, this one. So we're going to, now, now that we've got this, this uh, solution to our problem, we need to just take this integral and do the technique again. Do you see it? So I'll do it in blue over here. Okay, so this one, this is our blue integral. Okay. No, we got to rid of the x. Two and two is a piece of cake, right? The problem is the x, right? The problem is the x. One third e to the three x we could do, but not multiplied by x. All right. So we're gonna, so I'll use capital letters this time. So we're gonna capital F, capital G prime. And then f prime and g. So what will capital F be? We want that to get simpler, right? We want to take the derivative of which one is going to get simpler when we take the derivative of it. 2x will become 2. g prime, 1 third e to the 3x. Antiderivative, 1 ninth. Had the right idea. 1 ninth e to the 3x. And so, and we'll call this one B. So what are we doing? We're doing F, F, G, and we'll call this one B, we'll call this one B, equals B plus integral G, F prime. Is 
So I just started over. I just, I'm just not, we'll put that aside. That now we want to do this one in the blue box. So we set up the same thing again. We choose that to be the one that will get simpler when we take the derivative of it. And we're doing it again. So what is capital F times capital G? Two ninths x times e to the three x. Check my check my if I make a mistake. Then call me out right away so we don't dig a big hole here. There's lots of symbols. Is B plus integral G, which is one ninth E to the three X times two. So I'll just throw the two up top here. There's our F prime. Did I fill everything incorrectly? This is f times g plus equals our what we want plus integral g f prime. So this is our f prime, and then g is the one ninth e to the three x. I think I got it. Agree? Yeah, please. Uh, I was wondering if uh, capital G prime capital G should be switched. Nope, g prime comes from the integral we're solving. Oh. And now I'm doing the anti -der anti derivative of that. So when I do the anti derivative, I need another one third. Yeah, but that's just regular g. Right, one ninth. One ninth e to the three x. I need another one third in addition to the one third that was from before. Oh, okay. Do you see? Yeah. yeah, so when I do that when I undo the when I do the anti derivative here, <clears throat> I'm thinking when I do the derivative, I'm going to multiply it by another three, so I got I need another one third. Okay, are we good? Yeah, please. Um, I learned a way, like a really simple way to do it when you have an x to the with an exponent um, in the integral. You want me to do like this way on a test? Or like no, if you got no, as long as it's right, it's fine. Do whatever you want. Yeah, as long as it's okay. Little stuff like that, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, b then equals this, 2 ninths, x e to the 3x, minus the antiderivative here, which we'll just do. Okay, so it's going to be 2 ninths, antiderivative of e to the 3x, again, 1 third e to the 3x. So that is b. Agree? Questions? Like it? Yeah, please. Um, would it, uh, so in the beginning, you know, when we choose uh, f and g, yep. um, would it be easier if you reach the point in part a where we realize that we couldn't do it anymore, if you go back and switch f and g and try it that way, or would that just be more difficult? Well, if you switch them, what's going to happen? You're going to get 3e e to the 3x, and your antiderivative is going to be 1 third x cubed. So you just made it worse, okay. you, right? Because now you've got x cubed e to the 3x. Okay. You do went the wrong way. <clears throat> okay, so now we're ready to write. Our, what we really wanted was a. That's b. So what is a? A is? It's this thing minus b. So it's going to be 1 third x squared e to the 3x minus parentheses, because it's two terms, 2 ninths x e to the 3x minus 2 27ths e to the 3x. Okay? If it's a definite integral, then you do you you evaluate the limits on the whole thing. Get the whole thing done, and then you're gonna evaluate the limits on the whole thing. Or if it's indefinite, <coughs> get the whole thing done and add c at the very end. <clears throat> Answer. Question. So when we're doing these type of problems, we're essentially solving for A. A for answer. Okay. Yeah, that's this, right? We're solving for this part of the product rule. Okay. 
by finding the other integral in the product rule because it's easier. So final answer in the black box. How do we check it? We, that would be a longer check. Let's not do it, okay? <laughs> but you would, if you did the product rule and the product rule again, and then you did this derivative and you collected all your things that were alike, everything, you get lots of cancellations, you'd be down, you'd get, you'd get down to this one term. You have lots of things subtracting off to zero, and you get just to end up with x squared e to the 3x, believe it or not, okay? Questions? Okay, let's try something more challenging. <laughs> Question? Any questions? Um, Can you ask it even though I took... I was going to ask what the other alteration was to make it so that you could undo the chain rule because you didn't mention it earlier. The other alteration, what do you mean? I'm not, I don't remember what I said. One more time, try me again. You said there was a second alteration that we hadn't covered that you could have made the actual functions that you could have used. Yeah, oh, 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 right, right, right. Okay. So what was it? It was, it's kind of a major, it's kind of a major alteration. All right, so yeah, we could make that cubes, or we could do something to this. What would we have to do to this to make it work? Uh, if we took away the squared, would that be enough? Nope. we got to get rid of the whole thing. <laughs> That's the only way we can do it. We'd have to get rid of the whole thing. The only thing, yeah, so, because why? Because this would have to be one power lower. Whatever's there has to be one power lower than that, right? So one power lower than one is zero, okay? So that's why that's that's kind of a major change. So that's more the minor change, that one. Okay. Other questions? All right. How about this one? Okay, so we got a ratio, and we've seen with undoing the chain rule that we can make ratios look like products, which we, again, need here. Oh, so, oh, okay, let's, let's do it. <coughs> Two minor alterations that you could do to this so that undoing the chain rule works. Everyone figure it out. Two minor alterations you could do to this so that undoing the chain rule works. Everyone figure it out. Go. So, so it's two different ways to do it. So each one requires one minor alteration. So you have two possibilities. Okay, volunteer. Yes, sir. You can change the in the numerator. Yeah. Maybe, but just R to the first power. He wants R to the first power in the numerator. What? What's that? We need this to be like the derivative of what's inside here. So he wants r to the first. Yes? One at a time. <coughs> you want r to the fourth here? Okay, but we're still we're still asking about this one he, he said. <coughs> he wants to do this. Take away that just make it r to the first. Does it work? Yes, yes, that works. Why? Because r is essentially the derivative of r squared. All right, now you have another suggestion. Go ahead. Which one? He wants to make this r to the fourth down here. Right, because now r cubed is essentially the derivative of 4 plus r to the fourth. Okay, it's good practice. That's really good practice for identifying undoing the chain rule. Okay? But we don't have either of those. We have this one for which undoing the chain rule doesn't work. So we got to figure out what's f, g prime. Okay, so which one will get easier if we take the derivative of it? Obviously r cubed, so we got r cubed. And then this one, we got 1 over 
r squared. So we can take the derivative of f, we get 3r squared. And what do we need? We need to kind of be able to, quick and dirty, do the antiderivative of this. 1 over square root of 4 plus r squared. So we need to produce, without some kind of major work and technique, get an antiderivative. What do we think? They're trying hard. I hear lots of people trying. But the problem is we got an r squared there, right? What would that need? R in the numerator. But we've got 1, right? We've got 1. We need an r. Uh, no, our arc sign would be 1 over, that would be a 1 minus r squared. Wow. So this is 4 plus. It's, too, it's too, too far away from sine inverse to make it like sine inverse. Okay. On what? Yeah, so this is, is not a quick, the point is, this is not an easy antiderivative that we need it to be to make this work. Okay, so let's try switching. So, uh, 4 plus r squared to the negative 1 half. And r cubed. So, derivative, negative 1 half, 4 plus r squared the negative 3 halves times 2r. Antiderivative, 1 fourth r to the fourth. Oh, that's f prime. Agree with my work there? I did the chain rule. And so now we're going to have the integral of this times this. Integral of g f prime. I write that out fast. And that that's supposed to be the easy antiderivative. So the twos go away. So we have negative r to the fifth over four. Four plus r squared. You're not going to like me. How about that? So that becomes this this thing right here. Now is that, which is supposed to be easier. How'd we do? Terrible, right? This is horrible, right? This is worse than the first thing we did. Now we've got 4 plus r squared, and we got r to the fifth out here. Uh, I multiply these. Okay, yeah, I, I know you got it, and I'm, I will give you the chance, but we're going to take it slow, okay? r to the fifth came from f prime times g. r to the fourth times r. And then the twos went away here, and there's the four. Okay, so we switched them and it got worse. It got worse. It seemed like we were almost, we almost had it the first way, but we switched it and we thought that would work and this is worse. So it's like even bigger friendly face, okay? <coughs> so Lee has a suggestion. So let's start, start up again here. What was it? R cubed dr over square root of, right. So we got f and g prime. And I'm just going to write down what we had the first time. r cubed. And what was the problem with this again? The problem was this was trying to get g, the antiderivative. We couldn't get this because this wasn't set up to get the antiderivative. So, what would it need to be in order to be able to do that antiderivative? If we had an r up here. So could we have an r up here? And then this would be? So we're going to pull one r off this to group with that and leave r squared to be f. And then we've got this antiderivative. We can undo the chain rule. Tricky. Do you see what happened? So is that where we're doing the right side as well as the left side? 
What do you mean the I don't understand right and left? So we're just we're just figuring out what f and g prime should be so that we can get f prime and g right now. Does that this is like the setup. So f prime will be two r. Okay, so now what will this be? It'll be four plus r squared to the positive one half. And so that would be like a first attempt, right? Because now we're, this is actually we're undoing the chain rule to get this antiderivative. So we need to check it. I'll check it in red. So if we check, we get one half, four plus r squared to the negative one half times two r. Is it exactly that? Yeah, the one half from the exponent cancels with the two from the r squared derivative, and we got it. So that was our check of our first attempt, and our first attempt was good. Now we can do it, or we hope we can, right? So now we're going to set up this thing over here. f times g is r squared times g is 4 plus r squared to the 1 half equals what we're trying to solve, a plus, and we cross our fingers that we can do this one, right? 4 plus r squared to the 1 half times 2r. Uh oh, it looks a little daunting. Can we do it? How do we do it? How can we do that? What's the first question we always ask? Is it undoing the chain rule? Does it work? Yes, 2r is, is the derivative of r squared. Not even essentially. It is. 2r is the derivative of r squared. We got it. We can do it. So it's plus 4 plus r squared to the 3 halves. And we need a 2 thirds out here. And then we would check that, and when we check that, will it be exactly that? Yeah. Nope. We're going to have what? So let's do the check. So that's our first attempt right there, first attempt. The check is 3 halves times 2 thirds, 4 plus r squared to the 1 half times. Oh, it is exactly. It is right. Yeah, there is a 2 there. Okay, yeah. So this is exactly the antiderivative of that. I thought we had to take care of the 2, but we have the 2. Okay, so we got it. So we got So therefore a equals this minus that. Questions. So that one required in setting the up the original f and g prime, it required a little ingenuity there, right? So we had to pull off an r to group it with this, so we could do that antiderivative to start. Can you show that antiderivative one more time, or just explain it? Which one? The g prime to the g. Yeah. So this is r times this is the negative one half. So this is undoing the chain rule. So this is your your g prime f. So you're going to raise power, so this is negative one half, so you're going to raise power and it be one half, leaving the inside the same. So that's like your homework from last night, or the quiz today. And then we checked it, so you, you check the derivative, and we got exactly that. You're welcome. Questions on this? So you got to practice now? So I want you to practice. Okay, so we've seen, we've seen kind of... What these are for. So in general, it's like these are for, you know, x to the n sine x or cosine x. That's a common one. You've got x to the n e to the kx. That's a common one that you see for this undoing the product rule. So this is com common forms for this technique, common forms. Okay, natural log. So the antiderivative of natural log 
is not 1 over x. Why isn't it 1 over x? 1 over x is the derivative, not the antiderivative. Okay, so natural log x and forms like this. x to the n, natural log x. So these are common ones that you'll see. Sine of cosine x times the power of x. E to the kx times the power of x. Natural log forms, right? Natural log and, and natural logs times x to something. Those are all, all of these are solved by this undoing the product rule. So you'll be on the lookout for those. So now I have a couple practice for you. <coughs> What's that? It's a, it's it's how um, this technique is how you find that antiderivative. So you can do it later tonight, but I'm going to give you one kind of similar to that. But you use this technique on that, and you you get it. So well, let's do it. Okay, practice. <clears throat> what you say, Mark? There's not two things multiplied together. Well, that makes it even easier. That makes it even easier because when there was two things multiplied together, what? One of them we had to take the antiderivative of, and the other we took the derivative of. So there's, then there's no choice in the matter. So you just know which one is which, right? So should ln of x be f or should it be g prime? If it were g prime, what would you have to do? You'd have to find the antiderivative of that. Well, that's the problem in the first place. So that doesn't make sense. So it's, you're, you, it makes it easier when there's not two things multiplied. You make it f. And then what's g prime going to be? Nope. One. Go, solve these. Work together. Got ten minutes. Questions. You can work together. Ask if you're either making progress or you're getting help. Those are your choices. You're making progress or you're getting help.
You might need that fact. I guess quizzes takes care of attendance. Okay, so we can do this quick. Be ready for your name, because I want to go over those two. Malik. Ali. Abraham. Abraham. Bader. No Bader. Hassan. Keep working. Omar. Roman. Watch for your name coming. You get one shot. Morgan. B. Evan, you can keep you can keep talking. Evan, Jeffrey Block, is Evan here? Okay, be ready, guys. Jeffrey, Block, Taylor Bond, Blaine, Patrick Burns, Rudy, Maxim, Sam, Neil, Orlando, Logan, David, Farhan, Matt, Holden, Jared. Jordan Helms, Kevin, Eileen, Miley, Mohammed, Sebastian, Chris Katzen, Micah, Jonathan, Labarge, Lee, Nicholas, Nicholas L, Holden, Hamad, Nathan, Logan M, Mallory, Heidi, Clarissa, Here. Seth, Here. Juan, Burial, Crispina, Here. Caitlin, Here. Anthony Rodriguez, Here. Ashiel, Here. Aaron Roth, Here. Jack Ruger, Here. Benjamin, Here. Lucy, Here. Dylan, Here. Lucas, Here. Jessica, Here. Jessica Sutton, Aaron, Here. Aaron, Cody, Here. Jet, Here. Jacob, Here. Daniel, Daniel Woodley, uh, Ramy, Rami. Rami, sorry, uh, Kevin, like the tsunami. Is Kevin here? Yeah. Uh, Lee, Lei, Lei He, Mingjing, Yangbo. Okay, which one do you want me to do, first or second? Okay, so we're going to do this one, so we need to figure out what what F is and what G prime is. So either F's going to be sine inverse or G G prime is going to be sine inverse. There's no there's no choice. If you make G prime sine inverse, then you have to find the antiderivative. That's what we're trying to do. So we're going to put it here. And then G prime is one. 
Okay, so then here is our, take the derivative, that's going to be our f prime right there. Okay, and then g is x. Good on the setup so far? All right, so f times g is uh, x sine inverse x equals a plus integral g f prime, g times f prime, which is 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half, which should be, we should be able to do or do it, do it again to get closer. Either we, either we can do this or we can do another step, do the whole technique again, like you saw earlier, and get closer. So can we do it? What technique? Undoing chain rule. There it is. Always look for that one first. The derivative of 1 minus x squared is essentially x, which is the other factor. That's undoing chain rule. That's undoing chain rule. So come over here, and our first attempt would be 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half. And maybe let's we'll still throw a 2 out there in the first attempt. No, we don't need to do that. Just leave it like that. So there's our first attempt. What's the check? The check is 1 half, 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times negative 2x. Is that exactly this? What do we need? Just a negative sign. The 2's go away, but we got this negative sign. So our second attempt would be negative this. So then we get a equals that minus that. x sine inverse x minus this. Negative 1 minus x squared to the positive 1 half. Which this minus minus becomes plus, plus c. Questions? Please ask if I lost you. Okay, listen carefully before... You, I'll pack up. So for Monday, you'll have a web work on this stuff. And then you're going to do a little self-study of the next thing coming up. I'll give you very detailed instructions on Blackboard of how to do that kind of independent study. And there will be a web work on that, too. Okay? We've got five days. So you've got five days to work on that. If you need help in office hours, uh, tomorrow, 3 to 4.30. Friday, I might be able to do